Canada's Embassy. Um, it's becoming quite a regular feature in Canberra and uh, synonymous with MUA here to stay. We're here to tell Malcolm Turnbull and his gang at MUA we're not going away. Before we start today, uh, I just want to pay my respects to the traditional landowners, the Nungawal people, um, their elders past, present and emerging. Um, and uh, a personal thing from me to say, your land always will be. Comrades, we know that this government has lost its way. We know that this government is not just waging a war on our members in terms of shipping, we know they're waging a war on all workers. And as late as yesterday, Labor and the opposition and the crossbenchers were successful in amending an act that was going to be absolutely draconian to workers in this country. Um, so throughout today, we want to go through the theme of shipping. It's about our shipping. It's about our jobs. It's about our right to work in our own country. And it's about our rights to stand up and fight to have those, to have those rights and not expect to be sued. We don't expect to be placed on an unemployment line and then get sued for the privilege of being unemployed. But also we're here to recognise that it's not only our challenge of the broader trade union movement uh, and we're here with our comrades in the trade union movement to say we're in it and we're going to... I've just lost... here we go. We're, here, we're in it together and we're certainly not going to lose momentum like I just did then. Um, and we're going to make sure that we carry this campaign through and that is if Malcolm Turnbull and his government don't want to represent all Australians and in particular workers of this country, well it's time to go. Our first speaker, I'd like to introduce Jed Kearney who's been a wonderful supporter of the MUA through all of the disputes in terms of shipping and an ongoing fighter in terms of the trade union movement in general for all workers. Welcome Jed. Thank you. Thanks. Now can everyone hear can you hear me? You've got to stand there. How's that? You've got to stand in just one spot for the future. Um, on a very chilly spring Canberra morning, we really appreciate you coming down. And I want to congratulate the MUA for setting up the Jobs Embassy again. It's really bad. It is a bad thing that we have to be here at the Embassy. But it's a good thing that everybody is turning out to support workers in this country. I've lost the speaker again. This is going to be tricky. I do need to look. <laughs> so why are we all here? Uh, we're here first of all because we want to hear me. What will I do? Hang on. Like this? The ACTU is running a campaign. I'm just going to shout, I think. Can you hear me if I shout? The ACTU is running a campaign to change the rules. And if ever we need an example of how the rules are broken in this country and are working against people, it's what's happening in the seafaring industry. What sort of government would allow workers, good workers, good people with decent jobs to lose those jobs? And not only lose those jobs, but see an entire industry, an Australian industry, disappear. tell you what type of government. It's the type of government that allows an employer like Murdoch University to trash or to terminate an EBA and throw three and a half thousand workers off good paying jobs back on the world with a massive pay cut. It's the type of government that allows big multinational corporations like ESSO down at London cheapest bidder and see 200 loyal, skilled, good workers lose those jobs because another labour hire firm comes in and says we can give you cheaper, cheaper labour and cheaper workers. What kind of government thinks that's a good idea? What type of government, I ask you, would allow a company like Glencore to lock out its workers up in Oakey North for what, 60 days? Are we up to? Lock them out. Good, loyal employees, all in the name of driving down wages, getting rid of good conditions. What sort of government attacks working people like this government has day in, day out, passing anti-worker legislation, 
to make sure that unions can't do their job of just protecting their members and making sure that members have good working conditions in this country. Well, this is the Turnbull government that is doing all of this. The Turnbull government that has seen penalty rates trashed. The Turnbull government that has seen workers in this country lose conditions. We will be the only generation that will have less than the generation before that we will pass on to our kids. This is a disgrace. But you know what stands between the government and ultimately workers losing everything? We do. You. The trade union movement does. And that is why we are running a campaign to change the rules. We will not allow this government to treat people like this. We will not allow this government to drive people into the ground. We are going to stand shoulder to shoulder. We are going to come down here at the embassy in Canberra as often as we need to to give this message to the people of Australia. Thank you for coming down here today. We are very proud to stand with the MUA. We have all sorts of unions here today. We've got government-owned employees here today who are being treated abominably by the government. This is not what an elected government should do. They should be lifting wages in this country. They should be supporting working people. They should be ensuring there are decent jobs that give people a decent living. That's what we want from a government. This government's not delivering that. Thanks very much, everyone. This is it. Um, so the next, the next speakers that we've got, we've got some special guests. I want to firstly, though, um, thank the CFMEU uh, Canberra, so Dean and all your, all your colleagues and your comrades. Thanks very much for all the assistance and the support over all of the time. Um, but the people that I want to bring forward, special guests that we've got down, we've got some uh, miners from Aki North down who have been on the picket line. And I understand it. The last, the last lockout uh, that Glencore imposed, by the time it's finished, we'll see the workers up there being locked out for 60 days. And there's no guarantee that there's an end in sight. It's a hard slog. And they're standing up purely for their rights to maintain the conditions that they've had and only to keep the conditions that they've got. It's not a very, very greedy or selfish position from the workers up there in terms of what their claims are. They've asked for the status quo. And the companies chose them to lock them out to make sure that when they go back in that gate that they don't have the status quo. And this is about respect. It's about respect to all of the workers on all of the picket lines that all they're saying to their employees is, we just want what we've got. It's not yours to take away. So, you know, greatest respect to you and your comrades up there on the picket line. You always know that the MUA, we've been up there, we've sent a few delegations up there and we'll continue to go up and support. Um, and it's warmer up there for sure. And it'll be good to pass through to give you an update on the amalgamation boat. <laughs> so, comrades, I'll pass this over to uh, the Oakey North Gang. Firstly, good morning, comrades. And um, this, yeah, as you can see, the weather's slightly different to what we're, we're used to in central Queensland. So, bear with our rug up. But, um, yeah, look, thank you very much for all the support down here. Um, from the CFMEU Oakey North Lodge, we'd just like to uh, throw our support behind the MUA as well. Uh, with all your fight going forward. Um, we are in for a big fight. The union movement in total is in for a big fight going forward. Um, and we, as, as the union stands for, is solidarity, and that's what we need to do going forward. So thank you very much, and yeah, one day longer, one day stronger. Thank you very much. Any of you want to say a few words? Come on, you got the stage. Never knock it back. <laughs> Never knock a chance to speak back. Okay. So um, we've got a we've got a fair lineup of speakers here, and um, better not let the join. I might get arrested. Um, we've got a lineup of speakers here, and it's really good to see that some of the politicians are coming out to um, to, to support not uh, the workers, but also in particular our seafarers. And uh, I've just noticed one over there, Adam, uh, Adam Ban from the Greens. Um, 
because I've seen you first. You can come and speak next, mate, if you like, and say a few words. Thanks very much. Um, good on you for being out here. We know that in Australia the gap between the rich and everyone else is growing and when um, wages are going backwards in real terms for many people, and it's not just wages but even the chance of knowing whether you're going to have a job next year is now something that um, people have to deal with not only every year but almost every month. And when you have big companies that are able to work their way around Australian labour laws and undermine the protections that most of us would have taken for granted, it's absolutely clear that the rules are broken. And we need a fundamental rewrite of the industrial relations laws in this country because at the moment it is far too easy to get out of the so-called protections that we've got in our uh, industrial relations system. One of the things that really, really worries me, um, having spent a bit of time travelling around the country this year, is finding how easy it is for employers now to um, terminate existing enterprise agreements that people have and to put people back on much lower wages and conditions and then force them to bargain from there. And that's not fair bargaining. When you take away the rights that someone have, has negotiated and fought for and built up over many, many years and then you force them to go back to basics and say, start again, it's no wonder wages growth is so low. It's no wonder so many people feel under such um, enormous pressure. Now, we know that it is in the Liberal government's DNA to attack people's rights at work, and we have been very, very strong in standing up to that. Um, but probably the only thing worse than an unfettered Liberal government is a um, Liberal government that's in trouble in the polls. Because when they're in trouble in the polls, they realise that no one's buying the prescription for um, trickle-down economics in a dog-eat-dog -dog world that they've been trying to sell people for the last three decades. And so what do they do? They do what Conservative governments have done for time immemorial, and that is resort to fear. And they've started um, rolling out the attacks on refugees. They've started rolling out the attacks on Indigenous Australians. And now they're starting to roll out the attacks on workers and unions as well. And mark my words, I reckon we're going to see between now and the next election um, which hopefully could be by the end of the year. Who knows what the High Court's going to decide. But um, I reckon we, we, we may well start, start to see attack after attack from this government on people's rights at work and people's basic rights to organise. And I think the, um, we see that in, um, uh, with shipping. We're seeing, um, we're, uh, we're seeing companies being able to use our migration system to circumvent our labour relations system. And we're seeing it right across the board, um, activities onshore as well as offshore. And uh, I'm very, very proud to be part of a party that has always stood up for people's rights at work and will continue to do so. Uh, and I hope that, and I think, my, my prediction would be that um, going into the next election, we're probably going to see a rerun of 2007 when it was the union movement working together with the community that managed to change a government. And um, my hope is that uh, something similar happens this year, but that out of it we don't get a continuation of some very bad laws, but that we get to rewrite the rules. Because it's time that we had an industrial relations system in Australia where there's one law for everyone, where there's a solid floor of wages and conditions that you can't use legal mechanisms to contract below, um, and that where we have a, a, an industrial relations system that plays its part in making Australia a more equal place and closing the gap between the billionaires and everyone else. So good on you for being here uh, and look forward to working with you over the coming months. Thanks, Adam. Um, our next speaker is a very, very good comrade and very, very good friend of the MUA. Um, and not just him, is his union, uh, the ETU. I acknowledge I've seen Alan Hicks here, the National Secretary. Uh, welcome. And without any further ado, uh, I want to introduce Troy to the microphone, who um, run one of a fairly big dispute himself not so long ago in the um, in the Carlton United uh, dispute, and um, the beer was pretty bitter around that time. Uh, welcome, Troy. Hey, thanks very much. <coughs> It's always a pleasure to stand shoulder to shoulder with one of the greatest unions in Australia, and that is the mighty MUA. 
Um, Jed talked about the need for change, and we certainly do need uh, change over there. Um, just remember this date as I speak, January the 13th, 2016. Right? The other thing I'd like to mention is, watch this space in the weeks to come. Now, depending who you talk to from a political point of view, the election is going to be in a few months or over a year. Uh, whether that's true or not, one thing I do know is the exploitation of Australian workers will go through that whole time. You can see it now with the government ministers and the prime minister, and it's a bit of a follow-on from the American election where everyone's favourite uh, uh, punter was the American worker. Well, you can see it out there now. They're mentioning Australian worker and Australian jobs. Well, let's not let them get away from it. The rules are broken and we do need change. You had mentioned before about ESSO and UGL. I was directly involved in those negotiations. Now, ESSO is owned by ExxonMobil, one of the richest com uh, companies in the world. They pay no tax. Massively profitable. All they have down at Longford is wages. That's all they give to the community down there. In those negotiations, they contracted out, as Jed said, to a company called UGL. And in those negotiations, they just said, look, there's an agreement. It's been certified. It's a couple of years old. It comes from Western Australia. And that is the terms and conditions that will apply at the Longford plant. Never mind those conditions have been in place for 30 years down there. And it was a 40% wage cut. Completely legal. We asked them, well, come on. You know, Exxon Mobil, this all what is the need for it? And the response is, that's just the way it is there. We want a reduction in wages and you've just got to cop it. That's one example where the rules are broken. The other one, and there's dozens of examples around in workplaces all around Australia, is the Crown dispute we're having at the moment. The Crown's been uh, down there for the last 20 years. You go and rent a one bedroom unit down at the Docklands, you'll pay about 850 bucks a week for that one bedroom unit. They acquired that whole area down there, Crown, for a peppercorn rent of one dollar. That's the rent that comes back to the state government. Now we've got a dedicated work crew down there that looked after the Pope night day. Now I'm not saying they're not like cup of tea, the Pokies, but if they're accepted in the community, we had a workforce that looked after those Pokies night and day. Once again, the company came in and said we're going to slash and we're going to burn, and these technicians were employed by Crown. And they were told overnight that they no longer had a job and that they had been replaced by a company who the director of is a bloke called Jeff Kennett, who gave the green light to the casino. The terms and conditions of the workers that replace those, now these workers, our members out there weren't on big money. They're on about $72,000 a year to work night and day to maintain those bogies. The replacement workers that work for Jeff Kennett's company are on about $55,000 a year. It's a drop of about 30% completely, completely legal, right? That is when we say the rules are broken and we want change. That's an example. Now, the other one, because I'm here with the MUA that I want to make mention, uh, is one of the most disgraceful acts that I've ever seen portrayed on workers in the 18 years that I've been an official. And it goes to the Portland MV crew. And I mentioned the date, and it's the 13th of January 2016, where this dedicated workforce, once again, Australian seafarers, some of the best seafarers in the world, the best trained on Australian boats, in Australian jobs, were ripped out of their beds at night and said, sorry, you no longer have your jobs, and their jobs were replaced by overseas workers on $2 an hour. And, and the silence from this government on this issue is deafening. I've got to tell you, and I put it to the media, as we go up to the next election, and everyone, and the, you know, the government and the Prime Minister's talking about Australian jobs and Australian workers. I challenge the media. Put it on them. Put it on these ministers. What about the Crown workers? What's your position on that? What about the UGL workers, right? And most importantly, what about the Portland MV workers that were ripped out of their beds after 20 years of dedicated service and are now unemployed because of that and replaced with overseas workers on $2 an hour? So we do need change. The rules are broken. My view is bring on the election, get rid of this government, change the rules. Thank you. Thanks, Troy. Um, our next speaker has been one of our biggest supporters politically um, in terms of the attacks, but not only but before the attacks even started, was the architect in what should have been um, legislation and policy that delivered certainty for the shipping industry. And really all that's happened in the time from when Labor was last in to when the uh, Liberal government got elected 
the last two elections is they've just changed the intent of the Act. Just changed the intent of the Act, bastardised the Act to give foreign ship owners the right to come and ply their trade on this coast and not have any uh, any countenance in terms of employing Australian seafarers or any any kind of uh, accountability to the uh, to the Australian taxpayers. Um, without any further ado, uh, Anthony Alvesi, uh, affectionately known as Albo, uh, I'd like to come forward to say a few words. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Thanks, mate, and it's uh, great to be here. But I don't want to be here, and nor do you. Why is it that we've got to have a jobs assembly to say that we support Australian seafarers being employed on Australian flag ships working around the Australian coast. The fact is that this government has distorted the Act in order to replace Australian jobs on Australian wages with foreign workers being paid foreign wages. And it's simply a matter of greed that they've done it. And it's also a matter of ideology because it simply doesn't make sense when it comes to the national interest. Take the MV Portland, a ship which did a task from one destination in WA to another destination in Victoria. Picked up the alumina, takes it round to the refinery, gets it done, goes back, gets more. Two destinations, a consistent voyage. And yet the government allowed a foreign ship to take those jobs on the basis that it was a temporary licence could be granted. That, in my view, is a complete distortion of the Act. There are real reasons why we need an Australian shipping industry. As an island continent, it is essential for our national economy. We, perhaps more than any other country on the planet, as an, as an island state that has been built on the basis of our maritime activity, need those Australian-based skills in our national economy. Because once, of course, all the Australian ships are gone, the foreign ships can just put up their prices, but still pay the workers exploited on their foreign wages. The other reason is the issue of our environment. When you look at every single disaster around our coast, whether it be the Shenang, whether it be the Pacific Adventurer, they have something in common. What they have in common is a foreign flag on the back of the ship and foreign seafarers. Australian seafarers and mariners know the Australian coast, know the importance of protecting our pristine natural environment, and a single disaster on the Great Barrier Reef would cost the national economy billions of dollars as well as having devastating impacts on that pristine, great, natural wonder of the world. But there's a third interest as well. You hear a lot about this from this government about stopping the boats, about the dangers that people coming into Australia represent if they don't have proper checks. But what they've done with their policy explicitly is stop the Australian flag on the back of Australian ships. That is their policy. So you have circumstances whereby without having the same maritime security identity card and the same rigorous security checks that we have on Australian seafarers, it's a virtual free-for-all when it comes to ships with a foreign flag coming into our coast, coming into our ports, engaging in our harbour. But the government has nothing to say about that. We've continued to ask questions about how it is that those foreign workers who were brought in and put on the Portland when people were dragged off that ship in the middle of the night, on what possible basis? where the security checks and visas allowed for those workers. So when you hear Macalia Cash and all these frauds from the coalition 
talk about the national interest, then just ask them, where's the national interest when it comes to Australian ships around our coast? Because Australian shipping is an essential industry. It shouldn't be an add-on. It's something that we as an island continent know is necessary. And the land of the free market in the United States has the Jones Act. They don't allow foreign ships to undertake coastal trading around their coast. Nation states understand that there's a real link between a domestic maritime sector, an international trading sector through maritime, and the national interest in terms of a link between the skills that are required for our Navy and the skills that are required for our merchant fleet. And they understand that it is absolutely in the national interest. So I say on behalf of Labor, and there's a range of my colleagues here uh, today, Justine Kay, Josh Wilson, Susan Lamb, others were here. Ah, Murray Watts hiding behind the, the camera there. And uh, Bob Catter, uh, who's here as well. Not one of us, but he's a good bloke. And he's always, and he's always, he's always stood up for Australian jobs as well. Uh, and you can rely upon him like you can rely upon the Australian Labor Party to stand up, to take on this government and its rotten agenda of destroying Australian jobs. And in government, you can rely upon us to be there creating Australian jobs. I guess I, do, I can shorten up the introduction uh, because our next speaker uh, is speaking on the basis of the recognition that always stood up for Australian industry, Australian jobs and uh, in particular uh, in, and the right for Australians to work in those jobs. Uh, without any further ado, I'd like to invite uh, Bob Catter up to the mic and say a few words. <clears throat> I re uh, remember the day well. Uh, climbing out of bed, switching on the radio to the ABC and hearing um, Paul Keating say that we will have the freest economy on earth. And I picked up a boot and threw it across the room and hit the wall and, and said, now I'm going to have to look after unions as well as farmers and towns, little towns and, and all these other people. Now, thank you, Mr Keating, we have to look after unions as well. I'm just like mad. Well, are we going to work for five dollars a day, labour, or are we going to export jobs overseas? Well, I don't have to tell you how many jobs have been exported overseas. But uh, next year, uh, no Australian petrol. We don't produce any petrol at all. We import it all from overseas. Next year, we import all our motor cars from overseas. Almost all of our white goods from overseas. All the jobs gone, gone, gone. Right? Now, when I say those things. You know, you've got to get behind blokes like Albanese because there's a lot of blokes in the low party and I oh, won't like me saying this, a lot of blokes in the low party pretty committed to that free market business as well, right? And it's about time they get weeded out. If you're going to represent the workers, then you represent the workers. You don't take their jobs away and send them overseas. And I get people, you know, at, <clears throat> um, in after-hours stores and um, in the... Um, little cafes, and they say, oh, we can't get any Australians to work. Uh, Australians don't work. And I said, I'm an Australian, and I don't like being called a bludger. So you better watch your language, mate, or you might get knuckle sandwich here, you know. You'll be serving a knuckle sandwich. That's what will be happening here. And, um, and I say to them, you know, you're going to be logical as well as aggressive. You know, you had all Australian workers here. 15 years ago, what all Australians suddenly become non-workers in the last 15 years. No, your government is bringing into this country 300,000 people a year. Sorry, I correct that. 650,000 people a year. Six, and I'll repeat that slowly. 650,000 people a year. Almost every single one of them 
eligible for work. They come in as students, you know, have a look at them down at your Red Rooster and your, your McDonald's, they'll be working there. Um, and, uh, and they bring in the Section 457 workers, an absolute abomination, and they are bringing in 200,000 migrants. Well, if you've got 650,000 people, the economy's only generating 200,000 jobs, and there are over 200,000 school leavers, well, you're going to bankrupt the country. And go and tell Mr Liberal Party up there, who talks about balanced budgets all the time, how the hell are you going to balance the budget when no Australians can earn any pay, and you're bringing all these people in, in here to take our jobs off us and undercut our paying conditions. And uh, I get criticised by some people for a very close association over the CFMEU, and I don't want to be denigrating any other unions by saying this, but, you know, they're up in my country, and I'm very proud to be a member of their union, and they are one mob that have never taken a backward step. You know, they have fought against the Section 457s. It didn't matter whether it's Labor government in there or Liberal government. They have fought like tigers against it. So congratulations to all you people out here making a stand today. God bless you all. And uh, you've got some great leadership. God bless you. Okay, our uh, last speaker for today is certainly not uh, our least. I just didn't recognise him without a white shirt on. Is the National Secretary of the CFMEU, Michael O'Connor. Okay. Uh, sorry, sorry, going too long. I suppose you're freezing. Can I just start by. Come here, Michael. I'll start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we're having a meeting and pay my respects to the elders past and present. Can I just say that the reason we're here again is to remind this government that workers in this country are not going to put up with having their jobs sold out from underneath their feet. Whether that be the MUA, the CFMU, the TCFUA, any other union in this country, we're going to fight for our members' jobs and we're going to fight for our rights. We're not going to have a situation where seafarers get dragged off their ship at one in the morning by a uh, private police force. We're not going to tolerate it. We're not going to see a situation where construction workers are forced to work in unsafe conditions in one of the most um, has the industries in this country because this government doesn't care about them or their family. We're not going to put up with it. We're not going to allow young people to be exploited systematically by waste theft. We're not going to allow that either. We're going to come together as blue unions, blue collar unions, white collar unions, unions across this country to fight for workers, their families and their communities. That's what we're going to do. Now the other week this government introduced an anti-union bill. A bill that's to bust unions. A bill that's going to take away right. democratic right. control of unions from workers. What sort of country will allow a government to take over the running of unions? Not a democratic country. That's what they're going to try and do. They're going to try and tell workers who we can amalgamate with. Which unions can amalgamate with other unions. They're going to try and tell workers which officials they're allowed to elect. They're trying to interfere in the running of free democratic unions. Well, we're here to tell this government that no matter what legislation you bring in, no matter what private police force you might use, or how many millions of dollars you use on the ABCC, you'll not defeat us, you'll not shame us, you'll never, never defeat the working class in this country. Our union and other unions are going to be here fighting. We're going to see a better country, a more democratic country, a country that fights for workers, fights for their families and fights for their communities. This, uh, this time is our time. A time for good policies for health. A time for good policies for education. A time for good policies for jobs. And a good time for unions when we change this government. Yeah. Okay, that ends the, uh, the speaking lineup for today. Um, we come to but it's just a message to our seafarers to, to show it. It's a very clear message that the fight that you're having to retain your coast, the fight for the right to man the ships under an Australian flag, uh, the message isn't going silent. The more and more people are recognising that fight, more and more people are respecting our right to state claim to man those ships. Uh, and this is the launch of that campaign, Save Australian Shipping. The red ensign behind us, that should be on the back of every ship. Uh, the coastal trade. 
Um, and what we're doing down here in Canberra for the next two days, so people are aware, is we're asking the politicians that support that to sign on and make sure that uh, this message goes loud and clear. clear. We're launching our website. Uh, we'll send those details out to the seafarers, make sure it goes far and wide, and let's get into this campaign. Let's get our message out there and let's get rid of this rotten government. Thank you. The workers united will never be defeated. 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 The